we want to create the function to reuse this content form if it was all already loaded once into this class. So there's going to be a button function that if the user hasn't yet co truly consented, then we can resolve the form and make a new trial attempt. So <clears throat> let's use this one. So we call it reuse existing content form. It's going to be a public function because we want to be able to call this from our activity as a button function. So it is pretty much a tweaked version of this function of load form. So let's do this. If content information is available Again, I will say log. Lots of logging. Don't for, don't forget to log because that's the only way to understand what is happening. Constant form and show. Okay. Again, we must pass in activity, and there's gonna be a lambda callback form error like so. <clears throat> now we do identical functions as in here while loading. So I'm logging that one. And uh, yes, that's gonna be like so. What is it saying? Move lambda function out of parentheses. Okay, not yet. Then we will say, actually, we can copy paste all of this from here as it was in our load form function. Let's do that so we won't have any errors. Only thing I'm just gonna do, tweak our We don't need to tweak anything, okay? <clears throat> and why am I getting this error in here? Let me see. Activity. We need to finish our like so. And uh, it wasn't there. Like so. We did. Our lambda functions were wrong in that step. So constant form dot show we pass in activity and uh, we are listening the uh, the callback of this and uh, logging again the errors and uh, if it's obtained we will go through our to do check and reinitialize our ads as through a lambda function and dismiss the load form. So that's what is going to happen also in this reuse existing content form. Of course, there has to be else function because this is a user feedback button. And uh, we're just going to say toast and um, user visible user feedback will be displayed saying if this wasn't available constant for not available check internet connection okay cool then again in while using this button okay we're gonna recheck our is consent obtained this function here so there's plenty of a double fallback functions now checking the at the actual state if the google ump sdk does its tricks wrong are we ready to run this application no we have to implement debugging for the update consent info to uh, 
truly use this because this is going to be the production call update constant info we will be using a debug version of this function so if you're not gdpr currently you can test outside of gdpr and within gdpr area with a debug params let's do that let's finish with the last function so we need to make a debug version of this update constant info so i pretty much just named this update constant info with debug geographics so we pass in both with the activity we don't need to pass in if it's underage or not now we do want to pass in the geographical areas outside of not eea or is eea for the gdpr requirements and pretty much the same functions as in the main here okay i added comments with because these are the uh, the uh, geographical settings you can modify these pass them into the geograph and the sdk will react accordingly inside of EEA outside of EEA or geographic disabled. <clears throat> so let's add these. They will pretty much, there will be a little different setups for params and debug settings. I'm just now copy pasting this because we already created the params for the production. Now we are just gonna say constant request parameters and builder set constant debug settings okay settings are created here and build okay <clears throat> we don't need to pass in the uh, admob app id it should be in the uh, in your manifest already but now the debug settings this is something that uh, we need to create so use constant debug settings builder pass in the context set debug geography so this will make it react on the on the uh, gdpr requirements if inside and not to react if outside okay you need to pass in your test device has id so you can actually get this has id while running calling this function request consent info which will be run by either ways during debugging in your log cat of the application just search hash and it should bring up your devices hash id and you can copy paste it from there i'm using my physical device galaxy s20 for the testing of this game if you are using emulator you shouldn't need to use this emulators should work right out of the bat okay so that's it and then we will call the same function of request consent info update with the new params like so pretty much identical but do not use this in production only for testing you have to use this while releasing the app into production i believe we can now jump into our activity and start implementing our app maybe we will create use our prevs data store to save the is consent obtained i highly uh, suggest that if you actually use view model as i do in my other application this is the correct place to update your view model status which can trigger any reactions in in the uh, ui itself based on if you need to show your consent form if you need to show your gdpr prompt as i did in the in the demo app this is the correct place all the to-dos will make those reactions for you but as i don't have view model this is a sim pretty simple app uh, i did it quite long ago without it so i'm just gonna save it into my prevs data store also you can save it into your 
uh, shared preferences. So I have two functions save constant valid get constant valid. So I'll be using this one. At least I want to save it. So all of these <coughs> I'll be now same save consent valid and uh, now we'll be using the uh, is consent obtained consent tracker and we will need so and data store okay there will be uh, hmm, I will say scope main dot launch. This is a suspend function, so you need to use some coroutine function, I mean coroutine launch function or uh, um, run blocking, but uh, this is just by saving, so I'm just gonna say scope main, it's not a heavy task. Okay. <clears throat> What else do we have? That is one. We can now start saving all of these in here. Another one. Here also. Save. We are always going through through our is consent obtained that we coded in here. This is going to validate the true state of how the user consented 100% or not good enough, basically, to show the ads. So it's going to save the true false. Now we can dig it up in any place because this is a singleton and uh, any activity can request the state later on. <clears throat> okay, now it's time to uh, start using this GDPR class for our rewarded ad. So let's do that. Okay, we are now in our main starting activity called menu activity. This is the launcher activity of the game. So we will need to e initialize our consent tracker and my GDPR classes in here. And they were in my application, they were coin modules to uh, input the application context through the coin to avoid memory leaks. That's why I will get them through get function. So <clears throat> coin is going to take care of the uh, dependency injections for me. Like so. Now we have my GDPR and consent tracker as global instances for this activity. So we will also need to now call the my GDPR classes functions so somehow and to decide whether in debug or in production mode. So let's find on create and right after the on create we will create our update gdpr con consent and i want to say boolean great <clears throat> Like so. So uh, let me let me just copy paste because I have it quite neatly in here, and uh, we are calling the functions that we coded, so it's gonna work like so. Pretty much, if in debug we go through our debug function with our test device and uh, geographical settings and uh, we will also pass in a lambda function to initialize the ads if we had a permission from the GDPR 
else this is gonna be a a production application which goes through the official settings and uh, pretty much saying that it's for underaged or not underaged. Okay, now we used to initialize our ads in the application class. We cannot do that anymore because this is blind against the uh, GDPR requirements currently. Google does not advise for you to do this anymore. So we need to pretty much put our ad in here. Hmm. Like so. Yes. And it adds. Yes. And let's just copy paste this one in here. Like so. I'm just double checking. Okay, we have a function in here. Mobile ads initialize. This was my function, I believe. Was it? <coughs> No, this is Google Ads. This is the Google AdMob initialization. Great. It is correct. So remember, this won't be initialized if we don't have permission. It's going to be initialized only after the consent. So, and it is a Lambda function. Like so. <clears throat> now we need to call this in our on create when the app starts. So let's go into our on create and somewhere in the early, in the very early start of the app, we are starting to load ads in here. We might need to. Um, we do have to create permits for those ones also. Let's say to do and to do like so. And let's set this into true status because we are debugging. Great. What else do we do? Hmm. Oh yeah, we do have to actually initialize the ads also in here. So let's create a function. Let me see. So we do need to check the actual state of I'm just going to comment that out and we'll be using the consent tracker and requesting directly from this class if it's truly valid or not. Okay. Sorry, let's go back to main menu activity like so and we'll be also in here saving the consent validity like so so this will be this ensures that even if we don't show the consent form through the my GDPR, 
always when the app starts we get the actual status from the uh, consent tracker and we save it also into our privacy data store for further use if we need to have a global access okay it, if you have a view model do it in here so that's gonna update your view model at this point view model variable for instance then we have our update GDPR concept consent are we ready with this I'm trying to compare we don't yet have the initialize ads yes so we want to do that one we can actually do it inside here no we don't need to okay so we can only initialize the ads while the app starts if we have a permission at this point so let's copy paste our init add actually let's create a function init ads do we have a permission and we just say if if permit in it okay so we have to we can't wait for the uh, the consent form always so let's try to in it if we have the permit in here based on the consent validity hmm we can also now transfer these load splash load reward uh, reward ads from the on create inside this function because there's no point of loading the ads unless we don't have a permission okay makes sense we used to do that blindly but not any more so I pretty much have my ads manager class that it has all the uh, add mob functions callbacks in here so I'm just using them transferring them in here also in the on start we do need to know <clears throat> guard load splash add yes so let's i believe i can just say if load splash add like so hmm now I'm not loading any ad un unless we have a validity okay this is the one that will be testing start rewarded add okay this is the button function yes now we can this is the only ad currently that i am using now we can tangle our my gdpr in here and check if we do have enough constant permissions we can start the reward add from a button else we'll be prompting the user to give us true consent to use this rewarded ad else he won't get the rewards or the ads anyways that's our goal for the game okay let's do that